Hi and welcome to another Proteus level tutorial. Uh, today we're going to go over how to spawn some enemies and open a door. Okay, so I've got my basic room here and when I go through this door, which is a prefab, uh, I would like to shoot some guys and then have this new door open up. So there's a few ways that we can do this, but I'm just going to show you the quick and easiest way. So first of all, let's go ahead and get our guys in. I'm going to go to my asset browser, entities, monsters, zombie, and I'm just going to drag these guys out. Now there is a hotkey for this. Uh, at the moment it is tab and then any of the number keys will spawn a new guy in. But we're going to just use the drag system for now. Uh, the next thing I'll just rotate them so that they face the player when he comes in. And there's our basic enemy placement. So now if I were to just run into this room They'll be there, and I can shoot them. Um, but we don't want all of the AIs in our level to be always uh, look at all the blood, uh, always on, um, just all the time, just sitting there, because it's bad for performance, and it won't run well on consoles, which everybody's levels that you're gonna make for the workshop will also go on our consoles. So what we'll do is I'm gonna double click on these guys, look at their properties, and you can see that it says start on. I'm gonna uncheck that, and I'm going to use spawn effect which will create a really cool little spark and then I will probably just put like a little bit of a delay so each of these guys gets that delay gets those settings and uh, the next thing what you'll notice is if we play the map now they won't spawn and they won't show up and the reason for that is we have to do one more step we have to tell them to turn on and to spawn and we, the way that we do it is this little power button on the on the bottom which is called an input the top parts here are called the outputs, so the top parts are always outgoing signals, and the bottom ones are always incoming signals. Um, you can't uh, have an input talk to another input, it just doesn't work like that. They only go to an output, so outputs will only go into inputs. Try to remember that. We'll talk about that a few more times uh, in the future. So. One of the ways that we could do this, we could have them spawn off of this door, so the first thing here. I can select them both, and now they'll spawn when the door opens. Um, but let's say we want something a little different, and uh, so I think one of the problems that you'll encounter with this setup is that every time you open the door, they will spawn again, and we don't really want that. So one of the ways that we could do this differently, I'm going to undo the scripting here, we can put a relay down and this is an all-purpose general function called a relay so I'm scroll down pick a relay and what you can do is have the door trigger this relay and then have the relay trigger the zombies and then from here we look at the inspector properties on this relay and at the very bottom here it says reset after activation and if you just uncheck that, no matter how many times you open the door, this will have only fired once. So let's go ahead and play the map. They spawn in. Cool. Kill them real quick. Make sure their corpses are gone. Cool. And now when we open the door, they do not spawn again. Very cool. Uh, one of the other ways you might do this, let's say you just don't want uh, it off of the door. Maybe you want to make sure that the player walks into the room first. Because, you know, sometimes players are weird. They'll open a door and then, I don't know, walk away. <laughs> they do it. So you have to be careful. Uh, let's go ahead and use this little draw trigger function up here at the top. You can also find this in the functions menu, but I'm just going to drag one out the size of my door. And we're going to double click on it to check out its properties. It's enabled by default, um, and we want to disable it after it's been triggered, just like the relay. And I'm going to use this first little node here, which is on touch. So when the player touches this, they will spawn these zombies. And we're going to make sure that only the player can touch this, and not another zombie. So play map. And now, they don't spawn when I open the door, but when I walk into the room, then they spawn. Cool. So that's one thing you can do. Now let's say we want to spice this up just a tiny bit and have another unit spawn in afterwards. So I'm going to go to my assets, 
entities, monsters, zombies, and we'll add a shotgun unit right here in the center. Going to rotate him to face the room. We're going to have him not start on. Use spawn effect. And I'm just going to leave him stationary so he doesn't move. And we'll have him pop in right away. So one of the ways that you would do this is if you wanted to have both of these zombies dead before the shotgunner would spawn, you would use the relay again. So let's go back up to our functions, find our relay, drop one of those down, and I'm going to put it right next to my shotgunner so I can remember that this was what the relay is for. And I'm going to play the uh, plug the relay in here. And if you, for some reason, are having troubles um, grabbing some of the nodes, what you can do is on the keyboard hold control and click. And what that does is using control kind of makes the widget uh, not selectable, so that makes things easier to grab if you're having troubles doing it. Uh, so we have our relay, and what I'll do is I'm going to make sure that the zombies, when they die, using this little skull, I'm going to have them trigger this relay. So I'm going to have both of them trigger the relay. Now, to make sure that this relay only fires when both of these zombies are dead, what we do is we look here at the bottom and it says activate after this many triggers. And we'll set that to two. And I'm going to make sure that it doesn't fire again, so it only fires once. So once both of these zombies on death event have triggered this relay, it will then go into the power node and spawn the shotgunner, who will use the effect and stay uh, in place. So let's go ahead and try that out. Engage with our room. Let me get my fists out. One of them down. And as you can see, then our shotgun responds. Cool. Uh, now let's make a the door open. So let's say, um, and there's nothing behind here, so once this opens, it's just the void. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, let's go ahead and just simplify this and make it so that um, when the both the zombies die we open the door so I'm gonna go ahead and replug in my relay on death on death double check my settings here set it to two on count and the next thing we want to do is set up our door so we've got our brush and it's separate and it goes into the ceiling and um, there's a little slice out here for it so that it can just nestle right in there um, and one of the things that we want to do is go to our asset browser and we want to go back to our functions. This is where all the good stuff is. Scroll down to what is called a mover and just kind of drag that out here. You can put it in the center, you can put it anywhere. Since just since we're only using an up and down motion, it really doesn't matter where you place this. But I, I like to place my stuff near my doors or things that I'm going to use. So it's easier for me to go, okay, well, what moves this door? And then look down and go, okay, it's this guy. This guy is the mover. Um, once we've got this in place, I'm going to double click on this door, um, this little brush here. And I'm going to say, in my inspector, I'm going to say select parent. And you can see this little blue line comes out. And we're going to parent him to our mover. Okay. And we're going to look at the properties of the mover. And I'm going to say, um, let's have it go up. What is this? One, two, three, four, four meters. Let's have it go positive four. And right away, you're going to see this little orange box. And what this means is this is as far as it's going to travel. And this is the speed it's going to travel. And you can actually see what it's going to look like. Um, but for Proteus, we like to have things nice and snappy. So I'm going to set the movement time to 0.25. And if it's ping-ponging, if you trigger it again, it'll go in reverse. Um, since we just want it to go up and stay up, it'll only go in one direction. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, it's actually done already. And we'll just say once the both zombies are dead, we want the door to open. So I'm going to use my relay, and I'm going to hit the forward button here. The rest of these are sort of backwards forwards to the end already, so fast forward to the end, or back up to the start. Um, and that's what these stand for. And these outputs here is reach the end, or reach the start. And I can show you what those look like in just a second. We'll add some pro sauce, as we call it on the team, to make that extra special. So now I'm going to hit play. Going to hit finish. 
jump in my room here, kill my zomboids, and boom, the door opens. Cool. Um, so let's add some extra spicy sauce before we end the tutorial here. I'm going to go back to my asset browser, decorators, one shot, and I'm going to grab two sparks. Let's do medium spark. So what I'll do is we'll have one in this corner, one in this corner, and we're going to hit on, uh, so on end, so on completely forward, this being up, we're going to play these effects. Hit save, and I'll play again. Kill our zombies. And you'll notice that when this guy dies, and he, those go up. You saw the sparks there? It was kind of quick. Um, but another thing that I would do is add camera shake. So I'm going to drop one of those down. And I'm just going to plug in. When it hits the top, we're going to do camera shake. And you know what? We'll go all out and do a dust particle as well that hits the stop. Oops. There we go. Cool. You know what? Maybe we'll do the sparks down here like it just unlatched really fast. And then when it reaches the top, it'll play that as well. And in order to make that look like that, I'm going to undo these. So we're doing some live improvising here. And you know what? I'm going to slow this down so it's a little easier to see. I believe that's it. And I'm going to make it just one zombie. <laughs> and we'll set that to one. Okay, so we got this coming in here. Wait, I forgot. I did something wrong here. On death, trigger the relay. The relay is set. Excuse me. Oh, I set that to zero on accident. Oops. Sorry. I'll sit right here. Nice little screen shake. So, cool. So that's the basics. Uh, remember, outputs and inputs. So the top are outputs. The bottom are inputs. You can't have an input go into another input. That just doesn't work. It only works if you do outputs to inputs. Uh, so I guess I'll find one that's got an output. So this is an output. We'll go into an input. Cool. Thanks for checking this out. I uh, hope this helped. Uh, we'll do some more advanced tutorials in the future videos.